You're gonna need two wardrobes. One for Jen and one for your Hulk body. Who's your best friend? Nikki. <laughs> Spandex. Spandex is your best friend. Hold up. Spandex? Really? Is this the best we could come up with? This looks like a one-way ticket to a wardrobe malfunction. Now, look, let's be honest here. If we couldn't consult a legal team for this show, I am sure as heck we didn't talk to textile experts either. So today, I'm taking Marvel to fashion court to see what's really inside of Hulk's pants. Not in that way. Ugh, gross. He's my cousin. Hello Internet! Welcome to Style Theory, the only channel strange enough to give you a real-world breakdown of how a superhero's magical purple pants would work in real life. Good luck finding another channel that's gonna do that for ya. As a preview of coming attractions, we also have other fictional clothing episodes in the works, like how effective female fantasy armor is, the viability of Cinderella's glass slippers, how Black Panther and Euphoria are single-handedly shaping popular fashion, and whether t-shirts can stop a bullet. If that episode list doesn't deserve a subscription, I don't don't know what does. So go ahead, do your superhero duty and Hulk smash that subscribe button so we can assemble the biggest team of theorists the internet has ever seen. If we manage to get to a million subs by the end of the month, that already puts us as a top fashion channel here on YouTube. So let's go team theorist. Speaking of multiverses and superhero teams, She-Hulk was a show that happened last year. Was it my favorite? No. But was anything from phase four my favorite? Also no. Tell you what I did like about it though, it finally gave me a good excuse to talk about Hulk pants. Because in a fictional universe where everything gets hand-waved away with magical mumbo-jumbo, She-Hulk woke up and chose violence. The show decided to give a very normal-sized explanation for a very superhero-sized problem. Who's your best friend? Nikki. <laughs> Spandex. Really, Bruce? Spandex? You're a world-famous scientist. Your bestie has a nanobot suit hidden inside his wristwatch. Your other friend has himself an indestructible vibranium costume that can absorb any force. Captain Marvel literally has a costume that can change in front of your eyes. And you decide that the best material for your superhero needs is the same stuff Grandma was sweating to the oldies in back in the 1980s? Say what you will about She-Hulk's twerking scene, this spandex moment was probably the single most absurd scene in the entire series. Series. So, since Marvel was kind enough to give me a real answer to a fictional problem, I thought I'd put it to the test. Since the character premiered in 1962, people have been asking what Hulk's pants are made of. And today, after six decades, we're finally gonna be putting a definitive answer in the books. So, just to set context, the reason this is such a big issue is that when mild-mannered Bruce Banner gets angry, he transforms into the super-powered Hulk. And this metamorphosis causes his body to expand. In the process, his shirt rips to shreds. But miraculously, his pants stay totally fine. Sure, they might get a little ripped around the bottom of the leg, but that's about it. And it's gotten everyone to ask why? How? Honestly, I don't know why everyone's so confused. Clearly, the scientific experiments altered his genes. I literally made this entire channel just for that one joke. It was not worth it. Dad jokes aside, comic fans for years have been asking what these things are made out of. And so, to begin my research, I decided to see if Marvel has ever tried to answer the question for themselves. After all, the Hulk and his cousin She-Hulk have been around for quite a while, so maybe we can try to pull relevant information from past incarnations of the character. Obviously, the MCU decided to go the spandex route, which we'll be revisiting later. Going further back in the timeline, Hulk 2008 gave us this. After ripping his previous pants to shreds, Bruce has to buy a new pair and asks, Can I stretch? So we know at this point in the movie, he's still figuring out the pants problem. Side note, Abomination clearly didn't get the same memo. He has shown his scaly hide for all the world to see. By Shang-Chi and She-Hulk though, the man gets himself a better pair of pants. Either he also got the spandex memo or his BFF Wong hooked him up with a more magical solution. Moving further back in the timeline to the 2003 version, get a slightly more specific answer. After popping some seams early in the movie, leaving him less than monetization friendly I might add, Bruce Banner is captured and rendered unconscious by the military before being dressed in a pair of super shorts. From that point forward, his pants are able to stretch as the Hulk gets bigger and stay intact when he shrinks back down to normal size. And this is a very good detail to have because this version of the Hulk is shown to grow bigger the angrier he gets, meaning he's putting more strain on his pants than any of the other versions. Meanwhile, over in Comic Land, they seem much more interested in giving us an explanation for the iconic purple color of the pants rather than their stretch. In Incredible Hulk number 122, the Hulk finds a train car that spilled out a whole bunch of purple suits. The more recent 
Jason, Immortal Hulk number four shows a college-aged Bruce thinking he's fashion forward by choosing the purple color. And in Incredible Hulk number 357, we get this panel about half-priced durable slacks. One thing remains consistent about most of these comic depictions, Bruce Banner is basically just a coupon clipper trying to save a few extra bucks by choosing a color of pants that no one else wants, so it's heavily on sale. Even the editors of the comic book seem to have a fun time with this one. Back in 1973, when a continuity error showed Bruce Banner in one pair of pants, and then the Hulk in a different pair of pants a few frames later, Incredible Hulk number 164 had this quote explaining it from the editors. We thought everybody knew by now that whenever Dr. Banner turns green, his outfit turns into a pair of purple pants. Don't ask us why. But for all the jokes and errors and nonsensical depictions, there is one big answer found in the comics, and that came from the man himself, Mr. Stan Lee, back during a 2011 interview with Vanity Fair. In the interview, they ask Stan whether he ever tried to make sense of the Hulk's magical purple pants, and he responds with, quote, I just figured that Bruce Banner had probably been a friend of Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, and Reed had just given him some elastic trousers. There's an explanation for everything, but you may not be technically advanced enough to follow me on all this. Oh, believe me, Mr. Lee, it is my job to be technically advanced enough to follow you on all this. You see, Mr. Fantastic uses something called unstable molecules, which I actually talked about in a previous theory over on the sister channel, Film Theory. Mr. Fantastic is a renowned inventor, and one of his big breakthrough technologies is known as unstable molecules, a special super adaptive synthetic blue fabric that can adapt to almost any environment, including extreme heat, cold, and pressure. Basically, in the comics, they use this to explain how the Fantastic Four's costumes are able to cope with the powers of the four heroes. This would have been a perfect answer for our MCU Hulk to use if, you know, our only canonical MCU Mr. Fantastic hadn't been unraveled faster than a shirt from Sheehan. That means it's time, theorists. Time for me to live out one of my dreams and become a fashion designer for the gods. Or, at least for the superheroes. Eat your heart out, Edna Mode. Knock it! Okay, so let's actually talk about the stretchy elephant in the room. Spandex. Sometimes referred to as lycra or elastane, spandex tends to be the umbrella term for stretchy fabrics that can withstand very high temperatures. Also, fun fact, do you know why it's called spandex? Because it expands. It's an anagram. All you have to do is just rearrange the letters and you get spandex. Anyway, it was invented in 1958 by a chemist named Joseph Shivers at the DuPont Company, who you might know as the company behind another life-changing fabric, Kevlar. So, I think they have themselves a handle on durable fabrics. At the time, girdles were a big thing in women's fashion. Never heard of a girdle? Basically, they're just a sausage wrap for your waist. Girdles were form-fitting garments that you wore on your lower torso under your clothes. Their primary purpose was shape and support. There was just one problem with them. At the time, these things were made out of rubber. And not only was rubber hot and uncomfortable, it also was needed for the troops over in World War II. Go figure, making more tires for Jeeps was slightly more important than maintaining your slim waistline. So, with rubber on the way out, there needed to be something to replace it with. Enter spandex. Stretchy, breathable, shapeable, and not helping to take down the Nazis. Once spandex hit the market, it started to be used in everything. Athletic wear, shapewear, shoes, even menswear. But while it was certainly durable enough for this army of spandex warriors in the 80s, dressing a Hulk is a tall and wide order. Can it hold up to the strain of these two supersized heroes in the 2020s? Let's find out. When it comes to whether or not spandex can handle going from human to Hulk, size matters. Spandex can stretch about 500% its original size before breaking. So what we need to know is how much are Hulks increase in size from their human form to their Hulk form. Let's start with She-Hulk, since she actually has an IRL human counterpart that we can take measurements from. Tatiana Maslany, star of She-Hulk, had a body double for when she transformed in the show. Her Hulk form was played by Malia Araya, who is 6 foot 5 inches and shown in behind the scenes images to be wearing wedges for a little extra height during filming. So I think we're good to go with She-Hulk's comic measurements for her height, which is a not too crazy 6 foot 7 inches or 2 meters. In an article for comicbook.com, Malia stated that she was given a pair of size 14 women's pants to wear as She-Hulk. Now, I could do a whole episode on the problems with size consistency in clothes, but for this, we're just gonna take the average waist measurement for a pair of size 14 pants, which is between 33 and a half and 35 and a half inches. Since the Hulks are both on the thicker side, we're gonna go with a higher number of 35 and a half. Now, compare those to the approximate size of Maslani, who's reportedly 5 foot 4 and with a waist of about 24 inches. That is a vertical increase in size of 23.4% and a horizontal increase of 47.9%. In short, she's comfortably in the stretchy range for spandex. For the Hulk, though, we're gonna have to do a bit more work. When we take a look at the many forms of Bruce's Hulk, we start to see some inconsistencies. In the comics, Hulk's size could be insanely different from one issue to the next, so we're just gonna stick with the MCU's Hulk since he's the one that started this whole mess. Mark Ruffalo is reportedly 5 foot 8 inches with a 34 inch waist. Meanwhile, his Hulk is 8 foot 2 with no reported waist measurement. That's not 
all that big of a problem, though. Since the one consistent thing about the Hulk is that through each iteration, he keeps the same basic shape, all we need to do is find a Hulk's measurements that we do have, and then just make some basic comparisons. And thus, we once again come face to face with bad early 2000s CGI. The animators for the 2003 Hulk movie shared the measurements for their big green boy, which reached a whopping 15 feet tall and a 154 inch waist. That is a height to waist ratio of 0.86. Keeping that ratio in mind, the MCU Hulk's waist would clock in at about 84 inches. That is a vertical increase of 44.1% and a horizontal increase of 147.1%. Wow, maybe I judged Marvel a bit too harshly with this one. Both of these measurements fall well within the 500% elongation rate for spandex. I guess I should just take the L and rethink this whole style channel thing, right? Not! You see, there's one crucial factor that we haven't considered yet, and that's tensile strength. Tensile strength is the measure of a fabric's resistance to stress before it breaks under tension. Imagine you're holding a thread between your hands, each hand holding one end. As you pull it, you create pressure on the thread until the thread is under so much stress that it begins to unravel and eventually snap. Well, that breaking point is the tensile strength. And when it comes to spandex, its tensile strength is laughably low, a mere 67 megapascals. For comparison, basic wool has a tensile strength of 120 to 180 megapascals, nearly triple that of spandex. In short, spandex just doesn't cut it, or I guess it's actually too easy to cut. So if spandex is out, what should our ideal superhero shorts be made from? Well, let's first break down what pants really are. You see, pants aren't just one thing. Just like a recipe, they can actually be broken down into three main ingredients, the fabric, the thread, and the waistband. And in order to make the perfect pant, you're gonna need to optimize all three. First, we're gonna need some thread. For that, we actually have two major options. Option one, Kevlar. You know what you're thinking? The stuff that bulletproof vests are made from? And the answer is yeah, exactly that. Kevlar thread is used for heavy duty items like those used by the military or firefighters because of its high durability. Kevlar is fire retardant, ballistic resistant, and can withstand heat up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit or 420 degrees Celsius. That's gonna be an essential design component when you're launching yourself towards a 20 story tall fire monster. I'll stop you moron. Kevlar also has itself a tensile strength of about 3,620 mega Pascals. Not too shabby. Option two, meanwhile, is a little bit more obscure. UHMWPE, or Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. If that name's too long and scientific for you, it's also sold under the brand names Dyneema or Spectra. Well, not normally used for clothing, it has been proven to be stronger than Kevlar. Well, Kevlar is about seven times stronger than steel, Spectra is 15 times stronger. It also ranks higher in resistance to cutting, is harder to tear, has a similar heat resistance, and is waterproof. Seems like it would give Reed Richards' his unstable molecules a run for their money. In short, either one of these two would give us the perfect thread. So now let's talk about waistbands. We need a strong elastic band to hold up our pants that won't snap under the pressure. The Hulk's strongest pants will need the strongest rubber band that we can find. And find it, I did. Allow me to introduce you to graphene rubber, made by combining the ultra-dense synthetic carbon allotope graphene with conventional rubber, producing a super stretchy and near unbreakable result. Basically, this thing is a bunch of carbon nanofibers creating a super strong, super stable lattice. You take the graphene, you blend it into, um, into rubber, and what you get uh, by mixing the graphene with the rubber is very high temperature capabilities and also very high strength. Yep, hiding in the tip of that graphite pencil is one of the strongest, most versatile materials out there. Graphene has a tensile strength of around 130,000 megapascals, which is just insane. A single atomic layer of graphene would be strong enough to hold up a ball. It also has the ability to retain its original size and shape after being stretched, meaning that it can grow and shrink along with our Hulk without worry of his pants hands falling down. So we've got ourselves the perfect thread and waistband. Now all we're missing is the fabric. But before we start swatching fabric samples, I actually want to challenge you to a battle of strength versus speed. Can you hit the subscribe button before I tear it in half? Ready, set, go! Oh, oh, it would appear that the subscribe button is made out of graphene. Well, that just ruined my plan. Anyway, I hope you hit that subscribe button. Back to the episode. Okay, so when it comes to the fabric making up our Hulk pants, we actually have a few options, all with various pros and cons. First, option one, brawn, a synthetic material that's advertised by its engineers as being strong as steel, flexible as rope, and malleable as putty. This stuff is strong, with a single piece able to hold over 2,000 pounds or 907.2 kilograms of tensile force. However, brawn is normally sold in a 
tape form. Not really ideal for making a pair of pants. Sure, people have been making duct tape clothing for years, but the real problem is that to become flexible enough for stretchy pants, brawn needs heat. A lot of heat. 140 degrees Fahrenheit, or 60 degrees Celsius of heat to be exact. I know the Hulk tends to run hot, but maybe not that hot. Time to check out option two, hydrogels. Hydrogels are a polymer material that can absorb and contain high amounts of water. Now you're probably thinking, what does that have to do with fabric? Stick with me here. Well, hydrogel has been around for a while in medical supplies like contact lenses and wound dressings, even toys like Orbeez. It's only in the last few years that scientists have started to try and apply it to clothing. Hydrogels are highly flexible, and they're able to absorb the impact of small projectiles traveling at three times faster than a bullet. They're also being used to develop protective gear that can degrade toxic nerve agents used in chemical weapons. They also can create flame-resistant fabrics that are five times stronger than steel. All of this translates to amazing potential for superhero super suits. The only problem is that right now, a lot of this stuff is in development. Well, it doesn't necessarily knock it off the list of possible solutions, it does make getting our pants made a lot harder. So that brings me to our last and most likely contender, option three, synthetic spider silk. And this one even falls in line with our current MCU universe. Spider silk is the protein fiber that's spun by spiders to make their webs. And this stuff can do everything. It is highly flexible, it is super stretchy, it is stronger than steel, and it's already been used to make bullet-resistant vests and body armor. Now, admittedly, there aren't enough spiders in the world, real, MCU, or otherwise, to make enough silk to outfit every superhero. However, you know what the MCU does have an excess of? Spider-themed heroes, specifically Spooderman, who uses a synthetic spider web for all his web-slinging needs. And here in the real world, we have that too. Not the web-slinging, the synthetic spider silk. Though, has anyone actually tried swinging from that stuff yet? Can I volunteer? Anyway, synthetic spider silk is actually stronger than the natural kind, and is only getting better as scientists continue researching it, and as companies look to use it more widely in clothing. Best of all, the stuff's artificial, which means 100% less creepy crawlies. A very nice thing for an arachnophobe like me. Oh no! Ah! Oh my god! Oh, no! You know how in some households, there's like the one person who is brave enough to kill the spiders? In this house, there's no one brave enough to kill the spiders. There you have it. The perfect pair of superhero shorts. Kevlar thread with a graphene waistband and spider silk fabric. There's just one big problem with all those solutions. The cost. A lot of the materials that we talked about today are super expensive. That graphene rubber waistband, for instance. Well, the price has dropped in the last decade. We're still looking at about $1,000 per gram of graphene. And according to this waistband from Amazon, you'll need at least 13.6 grams, meaning the waistband alone is gonna run you at least $13,600. Sourcing and synthesizing new hydrogels and spider silks? That is gonna cost you a ton. I hope Tony Stark left you with a big old sum of money in his will, Bruce. Or maybe that's the real thing that's going on here. Why the Hulk only wears pants? Because that's all he can afford. When given the choice of a shirt that costs the price of a McLaren and pants that cost the price of a Lambo, he chose to protect the old family jewels. That's why the shirt comes off and the pants stay on. It's the affordable solution. I even mentioned earlier how cost-cutting he behaves in his comic books. It's even something that's been reinforced in other MCU shows. I mean, your financials are all over the place. Is there some kind of fun for heroes? Or did Stark pay you when he was around? My condolences, by the way. Uh, thank you, but no, it doesn't really work like that. I guess it all goes to show, crime doesn't pay, but at least it pays better than being a superhero. Literally taking the shirt off of Bruce Banner's back. But hey, that's just a theory. A style theory. Theory. Keep looking sharp. And superhero fashion is only the tip of the iceberg here during launch day, my friends. You ever wonder if your clothes could actually serve as a weapon? Well, click here to watch our video on whether or not you could kill someone with your shoes. Certainly some information that might help you one day. What are you waiting for? Click on it. I'm done talking here. Nothing else is exciting here. Unless you click that subscribe button, that is. Then a whole lot of excitement's gonna happen here.